Hello, welcome to a review on this really cool, surprising little knife sent to me by my buddy Chris um, to, I guess, just have a play and a review with. It's the LCK by CRKT and Ruger. So Ruger obviously just getting CRKT to make them some knives so they can put them in their catalogs with their guns and lots of stuff. I guess that was a good call because CRKT can get good designers and make good budget knives and this is exactly what this one is. I remember last year I was banging on about the Kershaw Atmos as my favorite uh, of the year. Um, Atmos, name, origins, unknown, reminds me immediately of Final Fantasy IX. I reckon this is going to be the same one for this year. This is everything that I like in knives. I think Chris has seen it and probably thought that's a very Pete knife. And he's absolutely right it is. This is an excellent little blade. I love it a whole lot. Uh, it's a good little flipper. It's not assisted or anything like that. Uh, it's lightweight and thin. You know, I like the thin knives. Let's take it down to the tabletop and talk a bit more about its specs and show it in comparison to some other knives, shall we? Righto, so that's the LCK right there. Let's put it next to a Spyderco Endura first up. So you see the Endura is a much larger knife than the LCK. And then put it next to, while staying on Spydercos, it's a paramilitary three down below. So you see it's about the same size, length, and whatnot as a paramilitary three. Uh, this is it next to a big lighter. This is it next to a Buck 110 lightweight special Super Micarta edition. What else have I got on the table here? Oh, here's some knives that probably aren't super, aren't super popular and have very limited value as comparison references, but here's the SOG Terminus XR, which is, yeah, about the same size-ish, a bit more of a stout blade. I quite like it, I just didn't love the steel and the price for the steel. And then you've got the Mastrop uh, S35 VN Keen, uh, designed by Ray Laconico. So those are the ones. So it's an interesting place to stop on, actually, because you're looking at these two. I reckon these ones sell for about 60 US dollars, and this is a $25 US knife. Um, and I would say the levels of quality are about the same in both of them. And the levels of, you know, uh, these are both really good little EDC knives, as long as you don't care about steel. Just the price on this one is just pretty darn good, if you ask me. So let's look at the features of this one. Alrighty, so first up, the blade is somewhat of a sheep's foot, Warncliffe style blade. Uh, it's quite a narrow blade. So um, in terms of mitigation of thickness, you see it's about as thick as an Endura blade here. And uh, to, to sort that out, they've put a pretty keen hollow grind on there. So whilst the tallness will probably not make it as good as, say, an apple slicer as the Endura, uh, these you know tall, flat grinds are great for going through food and things like that. Um, this is a really good keen edged, um, you know, still nice and thin where it counts for cutting pretty much everything else. So rope, even stuff like cheese that, that you know, makes full contact with the knife as it makes the cut. That'll actually be quite good. Well, this is actually quite good for cheese because this little shoulder here where the hollow grind ends actually separates material as well. So a very well done little blade. They've, they've known, oh, we're going a bit thicker, but we're gonna make it a bit keener. So it's really well ground. Just kidding. This edge here is my edge. This is a 17 degree per side um, edge, and I'm just about to resharpen it after I've spoken this and shoot the knife lab section. So uh, I put this edge on it just to get, you know, not that the factory edge was bad, but just to get, you know, my style of mileage out of it. So uh, that's that. But um, yeah, overall, it's a it's a nicely done blade. It's got the black oxide coating on it, which you see I sort of have started to knock off during sharpening already. That's why I don't sharpen other people's knives. Uh, and yeah, it's just Lurch Design, LCK, CRKT, and the Ruger logo on the other side. Uh, the tip here, I love this blade shape because it's still got enough of a tip. You, you can even stab, no worries at all. You just need to motion up. Yeah, maybe not stab a person, but you definitely stab into, stab into a, a, a clamshell package or something like that for sure. Really nice little blade shape. Very, very happy with that one. The blade is, of course, made of 8CR13 MOV, as you'll find with all the budget CRKTs. Uh, I've... Um, I'm just about to run this through the knife uh, lab, but the uh, rest of them, you know, generally do it from, you know, with a work sharp edge, they can do about 50 rope cuts. With a really tall, screaming sharp edge, they can get to like 140 or so. Um, that's when I put like a pretty ridiculous edge on it. Um, I reckon I'm going to go pretty um, high polish on this one. I think uh, that'll probably give it its best chance of doing well. I've got a little bit better at sharpening since I've been doing those Unleashed videos as well. So, in fact, let's move that, actually, 
We'll move to that in a second. Everything else you need to know about HCR13 and MOV, it's very easy to sharpen. It takes a very keen edge. Uh, it's moderately stainless, but it is probably best coated if you're using it in like an aquatic environment or a sweaty environment or something like that. Uh, it's relatively tough. It's been used with adequate success in fixed blades, and it generally runs about you know 58 to 59 Rockwell. But let's take it to um, the table and see how much rope I can get it to cut after a brief stint on the KME to get some mirror polishing action on it. Alrighty, so that's a pretty okay result, pretty respectable really I suppose for what we're dealing with in this steel. I mean in comparison to other non-powdered steels even, I mean the last steel I tested was the um, the, the you know, V-Toku 2 on the stretch which with the same edge angle did about 400-ish cuts, 420 cuts. So yeah, it's definitely not a super um, performer. It's got enough carbon in it to take an okay edge, probably better than your 400 series is, but uh, yeah, very much you know AUS 8 style steel. No worries at all, and you know, for the price you're paying, I always see these platforms, these CRKT platforms, I hope they're going to continue doing it, as though you get something that works, and they can use this as a um, as an impetus to start making maybe the same pattern, and maybe some G10 and some S35VN or something like that, that'd be a really cool knife, CRKT, if you listen to me. Um, this is one of your special designs, you, you seem to have a lot that you go through, and um, you know, they, they might last a year or something, and then kind of just vanish, or, or whatever, but... I've got a feeling this will have a crowd that is into it, so I think this is one of the ones to to pilar on and um, you know get some extra extra resources behind and get some yeah get some good steel and good you know better handle materials onto it as well because the design I think is proven as good and um, it's just a matter of if you upgrade everything you'll probably be able to you know charge an extra fifty bucks per knife and people will pay it happily because it's a good design. But I digress. Moving back to the other set of materials, uh, you've just got FRN or Grivery sort of style um, handle scales here over some steel liners which are um, yeah, not uh, hollowed out at all. But they're, um, it's still a very lightweight knife because there's just not much to it. Uh, the handle's got a very neutral grip which I always like. It's basically a straight stick with a slight index notch. Uh, and then you've got a uh, you know some pretty superficial lumping on. The, it is These are just feel like lumps. It's not particularly grippy or anything like that. It's just bumpy, wavy sort of texture on the handle which I guess doesn't hurt the grip. Uh, you can choke up with the forward finger choil. My fingers I wear... Uh, what have I got? There's some new mechanics gloves. Uh, I wear extra large mechanics gloves. Um, I don't know if that helps you, but my finger is kind of a little bit fat to really use this for anything more than super light tasks, just because I start to encroach on where the edge actually starts. But if you've got smaller hands, this is probably a great choking up knife too. However, absolutely no worries, just gripping the thing like this or like this and cutting and cutting and cutting and it does a really good job. Another thing I really like about the knife, like a real strength of it, is the pocket clip. I love this little pocket clip. Uh, I'm a deep carry pocket clip fan. Uh, this just complements the knife really, really well. Uh, it's straight down, it's not too long. Uh, it's a light knife, so it doesn't need anything crazy really holding it into place, but there's plenty of grip to be had at this contact point, and of course, nice bit of waving there as well to get it into most pocket savings without worrying too much about having to wrench it around or anything like that. So it is really, really good in pocket. Another great thing, they've dialed in the detent and the action to make it a really, really well flipping knife. So it's very hard to misfire this one. I mean, you could probably, you could try and try and mess it up, but um, even still, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a light switch at best and it, and it goes out. So really, really cool. You can preload it, all these cool flipper terms to make it really fly out too. So uh, it flips really well for me and there's no grittiness. And the action is, is excellent. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just take it apart and have a look at what, how it works inside. I figure I'd, you guys might want to join me while I do that. So hey everybody, Nick here. Today we're going to have a look at this little guy here, the LCK and, sorry, um, the LCK. We're going to take it apart using the where are we? T8 Torx on the pivot. Out it comes. Boop. A little fall out. So just one sided Torx there. And then those look like little, what are you thinking? Maybe not fours, I reckon sixes. Have to be sixes, surely. The rest of these. Yep, they're little sixes. Oh, and they come out. 
so far nice and easy. Just want to see what the pivots are looking like and what the construction is looking like inside. I do not have the banter down to maintain this, so I'm just going to fast forward. <laughs> drama on these screws here they sort of not sure which way they were going in and out or whatever so yeah cool looking at little um, bronze phosphor washers there so that's why flips quite good seem like quite little and you know, actually not quite so thin either they're quite sturdy little bronze phosphor washers so pretty cool huh um, that's the insides of this knife here um, and yeah, a little backspacer there yeah just a couple ah oh, that's what it was these little tubings were a bit awkward um, screwing into and out of so yeah, that's that's what it's made of. That's the um, components there. So you got these. This is plastic with the um, plastic handles with the full steel liners there. Big old pivot. Yeah, not too complicated. T8s and T6s had some you know awkwardness with the screws back here. You know, one you know twist it, the other side turns. That sort of stuff. But hey, easy enough to get apart. And that's what you're looking at. It's far too stressful. Over tighten that pivot. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Hey, nice. Centering is okay. Hey. Whew. Oh man. This is why the knife world needs Nick Shabazz. That's fucking unpleasant. All I could say is, uh, and I'm not sure if I'll do it now, but uh, this could do with a little bit of Loctite. I uh, just noticed that after a few flips, you start to sort of lose a bit of centering, and it's quite a narrow channel there. Um, but that's about all that I've noticed in terms of disassembly and reassembly. That being said, I don't have a Shabazz level eye for these sorts of things, so hey. Maybe, you know what, I reckon he's even reviewed this knife, so you could probably check out his. So yeah, listen, if you're obviously okay with HCR 13 MOV on your $25 knife, which I can't really see how you wouldn't be, um, then this is a great design and a great knife uh, to buy if you just feel like buying a knife. I mean, I know that's why I often get little knives like this because, you know, I'm, I might have gotten paid, but, you know, you've got other stuff and, you, you know, this is your thing that you do. You know, you, you might be married to a, a lady who buys different nail polishes and does her nails once a week. You might buy yourself a little cheap knife to play with once a week. These are what, that's what these things are great for. However, a lot of them lack the longevity uh, that, you know, this one does because this is, this is quite a good one. I'd say the design is a little bit of a step up above a lot of the other, um, the, a lot of the other cheaper sort of, you go on those sites, so you see RKT Kershaw, they're all kind of a little bit similar. They're all kind of the same style. You know, I know it sounds really broad, and I guess it is kind of broad, but you know, there's often the stone wash blade, black handles, all those sorts of things you get see, see getting around. This is unique and, and, and pretty damn cool, I would say. So good job to Mr. Lurch. I don't know anything more about you than that. Good job to CRKT for picking this one. I would say this is one that has got staying power and that it's definitely worth. Uh, I would love to see um, upgrading in terms of the materials. Because um, yeah, whilst the HCR 13 is pretty good, um, it's dulled twice already in my review period. Once, admittedly, was intentionally so on the rope, but then uh, the rest of it was just through a few general tasks over a few days. So uh, the other steels do last you a bit longer if you're not a fan of resharpening. That being said, HCR is not a drama, not a drama to touch overall. That's that soft closed door I was just fixing. You know how often you hear a big bang in my videos? Um, yeah, insulated as best as I can anyway, because it is still a piece of tin. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, anyway, I really do recommend the LCK. It's great fun, great to play with. Also really practical, really usable little EDC knife. Nice and slim. Won't notice you've got it on. Um, stay tuned for the specs and then the end card sequence. Goodbye. Goodbye.